Bonjour les amis. Oui, j'aimerais savoir pourquoi je suis encore vivant 4 ans après un cancer phase terminale où on me donnait 3 mois à vivre, où on m'a dit que ça ne sert à rien de faire de la chimio, de la radiothérapie, puisque j'étais foutu. On m'a dit, enjoy the life, profite de la vie, profite du temps qui te reste. Je vous suggère de regarder la vidéo dont je vous mets le lien ci-dessous avec Thomas Siegfried. Oui les amis, Thomas Siegfried est un de mes héros. Il m'a sauvé la vie avant même que je ne le connaisse puisque son livre, ses livres, ses vidéos m'ont fait comprendre ce que c'était que le cancer. Je suis un témoin de ce que Tom nous explique. Oui, j'ai fait un régime, c'est-à-dire fasting en anglais, une diète très longue. J'ai mangé après, j'ai supprimé tout ce qui était sucre et ça a été la première phase de mon amélioration et peut-être même de ma guérison. And the glutamine is uh, made from glucose. It's non essential amino acid. So you need drug you you can manage glucose with diet uh, but you will need a drug to restrict the glutamine. So uh, you must target glucose and glutamine simultaneously that means together while transitioning the whole body over to ketones, um, which are derived from fatty acids. So ketogenic diet, together, uh, restricted ketogenic diet will lower blood sugar, elevate ketones, uh, which is the ketones are for the normal cells, not the tumor cells. And then you target the glutamine at the same time. And this strategy should manage all major cancers without toxicity. Tom vient de nous expliquer comment fonctionne, comment se nourrit le cancer avec la glutamine et le glucose. The problem is no one can understand this. I, I might as well be speaking in ancient Egyptian or Greek. Uh, no one can understand what I just said. Um, I, I, it's very simple, but no one can understand it. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always wondered how is it possible that I say cancer is a mitochondrial metabolic disease driven by fermentation and the fermentation fuels are glucose and glutamine and the tumor cells cannot burn ketones. So the solution to the cancer problem is simultaneously restriction, the glucose and glutamine while transitioning the body over to therapeutic ketosis. Keeps the normal cells healthy and targets and kills the tumor cells at the same time. So, but for whatever reason, uh, people cannot understand this. Cela fait maintenant 35 ans que le professeur Thomas Siegfried essaye de faire accepter sa théorie et Jamais une étude n'a été faite. C'est pas normal. C'est pas normal. Alors, la rage dont il fait preuve, eh bien oui, les amis, je fais preuve de la même rage. Quand les gens ne veulent pas écouter, quand les gens préfèrent mourir, parce que, ah ben non, je vais pas arrêter la cigarette, je vais pas arrêter les chocolats, je vais pas arrêter les pommes frites, les pâtes ou le riz. Écoutez bien ceci. Things. Number one, they don't want to understand it. Uh, and number two, uh, it's hard to generate revenue uh, when you uh, have a very simple solution to a problem. In other yes. words, we do not think radiation is necessary for the managing cancer, the majority of cancers. We uh, don't think uh, toxic chemo is necessary for managing the majority of cancers. Immunotherapies that are the, the hot thing today are all based on the gene theory of cancer. If the gene theory of cancer is incorrect, you're not going to achieve the uh, success. 
um, that you would that you would have. So I, I'm telling the world that the view of cancer, the reason why we have so many deaths and suffering from cancer is because the theory is incorrect. Once the theory, once cancer becomes recognized as mitochondrial metabolic disease, the disease will be managed effectively. But it's hard to convince, hard to describe this to people. Uh, lay people understand it more than the scientists understand. I think the scientists understand it. They just don't want to. They don't want it to happen because that means whatever they're doing is probably insignificant. <clears throat> which is uh, which is kind of unsettling for the majority of cancer researchers. Quand j'ai compris, grâce à Tom, que le cancer était une maladie métabolique, j'ai compris que je l'ai que je l'ai créé moi-même, et de ce fait, je pourrais guérir du cancer en faisant l'effet inverse. You're correct. And that is a very disturbing uh, to the majority of cancer re researchers, that most of what they're doing is insignificant. Ah, it's terrible to say that. You know, I'm sure that if someone were to come to me and say, you know, your mitochondrial metabolic theory is wrong and everything that I've been doing is incorrect. My argument is, show me, tell me, pro pro provide me with the data showing that I am incorrect. And I will be more than happy to debate and discuss this with anyone. And I will clearly show how the, mito the, how the somatic mutation theory, the gene theory, is uh, incorrect. They cannot explain the nuclear transfer experiments. They cannot explain why we have all these oncogene uh, driver genes in normal tissue. Uh, how do you explain uh, cancer mutations in normal tissue that never become cancer? How do you explain the fact that there is some t tumors that have no mutations? So how can you tell me that cancer is due to genetic mutations when we have all of these inconsistencies? So uh, the mitochondrial, the, the, the somatic mutation theory or the gene theory of cancer is flawed, okay? So most of the cancer treatments are based on the gene theory of cancer. If the theory describing the disease or the phenomenon is incorrect, what is the probability of treating people with therapies based on an incorrect theory? You're not going to get the resolution. You're not going to get the effects. So we have to kill millions of people worldwide by toxic treatments uh, because people cannot accept the fact that they might be incorrect in their way of understanding cancer. I mean, eventually, at somebody your age, if, if you live to be 76 years old and we are still irradiating and poisoning people to make them healthy, uh, then we have a real problem. You know, uh, let everybody know it's not a genetic disease. So all these crazy things that we're doing to people, why, why do you think, are people excited when they have cancer? That they go and say, whoa, I'm so excited that I can get now radiation and toxic poison. You know, I didn't like the color of my hair. Now I'll take this chemical and all my hair will fall out and I can put a wig on and I can change my hairdo uh, as the result of the cancer treatment. Right? Makes no sense. No, it sounds like so, a bad party. Um, <laughs> and, and anytime, anytime you see some person with a bald head from cancer treatment, that person was treated by someone who doesn't understand what cancer is. Otherwise, the head would, why you kiss, why your hair falls out? You're trying to kill cancer cells, not make you go bald, right? So uh, all of these crazy things that we do to each other, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. So um, anyway, what are you going to do? That's the way it is. That's important because people say, well, where's the evidence? And the evidence is we are publishing case reports of individuals who do metabolic therapy and live far longer than they would have had they done conventional therapy. We are, are rescuing some uh, stage four cancer patients from their disease uh, by giving them uh, metabolic therapy as opposed to uh, radiation, chemo, or or immunotherapy. So um, there are no clinical trials yet, mm -hmm. mainly because uh, no hospital wants to uh, pay for this. How, how you, I mean, usually pharmaceutical company pays for clinical trial. Um, no pharmaceutical company has come forward yet 
to say we would like to do a big clinical trial on metabolic therapy to show that we do not need immunotherapies, radiation, or toxic chemicals. Uh, there's no level of enthusiasm to do something like this right now. So uh, we need a business model. And I think the business model will allow us to move forward. Also, we don't have trained physicians and oncologists. They, what I said to you, uh, they can't believe what I'm saying because they don't understand the concepts. Or even if they do understand the concepts, they don't, they don't want to believe it. So, um, so we just have to keep doing case individual case reports and, and publishing hard scientific evidence supporting the, the theory. And then eventually things will change. Just a matter of time. À nouveau, écoutez bien ceci. Yes, this is another important point. You should not consider metabolic therapy as a cure for cancer. Metabolic therapy is simply an approach to improve uh, overall survival and quality of life. Mm -hmm. Metabolic therapy will allow cancer patients to live much, much longer with a higher quality of life than the standard treatments that we currently have for cancer. Does that mean cure? We have no idea. All we can say is, is if, if everybody is uh, talk about cure, well, it's clear that standard of care is not curing the majority of people with cancer. And if those people do survive standard of care, they often pay a big price for this. They have many, many adverse effects in their body. They get other cancers. They have hormonal imbalance. They have microbiome imbalances. They have neuropsychiatric problems. They pay a very severe price for surviving standard of care treatment to manage their cancer. Metabolic therapy does not produce the kinds of any kinds of adverse effects. It makes you healthy. It makes you feel better. You do not have to lose hair. You don't go bald. You don't have. Uh, nausea, vomiting. You don't have these kinds of things. So you just simply kill cancer cells gradually while improving the overall health of your body. So uh, metabolic therapy will replace toxic standard treatments in the future. Right now, uh, people are just unfamiliar with the concepts. Vous avez bien entendu le traitement métabolique ne soigne pas, ne guérit pas définitivement le cancer. Améliore la vie très facilement, très certainement, sans l'ombre d'un doute. Et j'en reviens à ma première question. Pourquoi suis-je encore vivant Vous qui me suivez depuis maintenant 4 ans, vous qui avez peut-être vu la, une grosse majorité de mes 2000 vidéos sur cancer thérapie. Vous savez que j'ai fait des quantités de choses, des choses folles. J'ai mangé 300 noyaux euh, d'abricots amers qui renferment du cyanure euh, tous les jours. J'ai fait, j'ai pris 60 euh, différentes pilules le matin et le soir, euh, tout ce que je voyais qui pouvait soigner, qui pouvait aider à guérir, je l'ai fait. Euh, un docteur célèbre en France, euh, Laurent Schwartz, m'a dit que j'allais mourir des effets secondaires. Non, je ne suis pas mort, je suis toujours là. Et ceci, c'est un appel, un appel pressant, un appel urgent au laboratoire pour découvrir parmi tout ce que j'ai fait, ce qui a fait que j'ai guéri. Merci encore à Thomas Siffrid qui m'a mis sur la voie de la maladie métabolique. Je n'ai pas renoncé. Pourquoi parce que j'ai compris que ce n'était pas une maladie génétique. Si c'était une maladie génétique, il n'y aurait rien eu à faire. En 2019, je suis allé voir le professeur Thomas Siefried pour lui proposer d'être son cobaye. 
Hi, I'm here with uh, Thomas Seyfried. Seyfried, you say? Yeah, Seyfried. Yeah, Seyfried, and he would like to tell you something. Well, we're here at Boston College, and we do basic research, preclinical -clin pre research on managing cancer as a metabolic disease. We are convinced that this is a metabolic disease driven by fermentable fuels, which are primarily glucose and glutamine. And we think we can manage the majority of cancers by targeting these fermentable fuels. Now, of course, therapeutic fasting and keto uh, diets and uh, various procedures will all work together to have a synergistic interaction to target fermentable fuels, which we think will be the best way to manage the majority of cancers and provide patients with a non-toxic approach that will manage their disease far longer and more successfully than any of the current approaches that are being used.